So I have this uh, personal fantasy of wanting to make my art bigger and do sculptures and and have people experience them in different ways. You know, just like what it would feel like to go into a painting. Um, and and I, you know, I, as the work gets bigger for me, it gets more and more. Um, it starts to do that. But I was particularly um, excited when I saw um, the artist Lori Shapiro's work. And she's a LA based mixed media artist uh, create, and she creates immersive installations and they're just phenomenal. And I was so excited. Um, I reached out to her and she's uh, here with us today. So Lori, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just... Uh, it's kind of cool just looking right now, like this gives the viewers uh, like a sense of some of your environments, but um, tell us real quick, like, you know, I know you're influenced by nature, but you're, you are using, uh, you know, what are you using to make these environments and, and how are you creating these really cool spaces? Thanks, Nick. Um, I make my spaces um, with, paintings that are often on muslin and sometimes on mylar as well. And I use, um, I screen print drawings that I make and then I use them as repetitive elements in my work, which I hand sew onto the pieces and then cover with layers of water-based paints. Yes, so it's like, you're, it's like you're doing collage on this epic scale, you know? And I think that's what's so interesting. Like behind you, there's those little blue flowers on that, on that, is that sewn on? Like what piece, point is something that's been sewn on. Are all those painted or are they sewn on pieces? They are all hand sewn onto the muslin underneath it. And then they are, there's paint that goes over the sewing to further seal it and then often they're painted all around and sometimes on top of them as well. So like the plant forms that we're looking at, those are done ahead of time and then you collage them, but then by sewing them on and then you, do you paint on the muslin before you put the, the, the collage elements on or, or? No, so usually I um, will sketch an outline on the muslin and then I'll, I'll figure out what parts I want to use repetitive images on of uh -huh. flowers or screen prints that I have. And then, excuse me, and then I paint around it. So I can, I can show you on like this piece back here, right? So there's like screen prints here that have been sewn on and here and here, but then around the prints and like this is all painted. This is all painted, and then between the prints is all painted. So, wow. um, with the screen prints, they become one of the first layers in a layer building approach that I use to painting and mixed media work. Right, right. So cool. Wow. And, you know, it's crazy when you walked back there. I mean, I didn't realize how large those tapestries were I mean it looked like you just shrunk I mean I really thought they were like it looks like you're sitting a foot in front of this fabric that's really detailed my oh god that's huge that's yeah so I wanted cool. to get further up to show stuff I um I just put a swing in my studio I don't know if you can see I this I see that <laughs> yeah. oh my god <laughs> that is so that's so fantastic so I was like maybe I should do the interview on the swing but then I was like no that's not gonna work very well. <laughs> right right but it seems appropriate so I know it's you know we just have a couple of minutes but like so what is the feeling you're after with this really cool work I mean I get a certain feeling a swing is perfect for for this place uh just the in space you have but like what's where are you getting your inspiration and, and what is the feeling you're, you're after here? A lot of my inspiration comes from my own personal life, whatever I'm going through, a way to express it. And further inspiration comes from nature and wanting to communicate the feelings that I get when immersed in nature, the feelings that I get when 
when I'm with plant life and sharing that that inspiration through my work. And when you had your installation, the um, before you were born installation, and you know lines around the block to come and experience this. Did I was curious? Did you uh, like the, so the space would be ruined if you had if it was like a bar where there's thousands of people? You know, it's all crowded. Do you do you do you know like how many people you want to be in the space? And do is do you limit it kind of like because the number of people in a in an immersive environment changes the art. And I, I just wondered how you, do you even think about that? Like, I haven't thought too much about it actually. Um, because when, when there was that line to get into before you were born, there was, there was a doorman who was regulating how many people could come in. Oh, um, I see. And at yeah. installations before, <laughs> you know, on opening night, there's been people laying on the ground like looking at the ceiling <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and right. the last one that's what happened and it um yeah you know it um they seem to attract like-minded people that even when there's a lot of people in there it's yeah it's felt fine especially it's an opening you know there are right it's, it is a crowded space yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Don't you love that? That when your art works, it it attracts people that you like. I, that that's what happens to me. If someone really likes my work, I usually like them. You know, like we have a lot in common. Yeah, it's really interesting that you bring that up, actually, because usually, yeah, the people who like your work, they're a lot like you, right? I know. Yeah, that they resonate with it and um, feel a connection to it. Yeah. Well, um, I want to give the folks who are looking at this a, a, an opportunity to, uh, you know, I'll provide some links down below, but you have a, a, a opening coming up, Evolution of, is it Evolution of a, of a Woman? Is that the name of it? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. And so there's a, there's a, uh, you're going to have a virtual event for opening for this. It's, it starts yes. March 13th. Yes. Saturday, awesome. March 13th. And the virtual opening is at 5 p.m. The info will be below. We're also going to have a virtual performance from one of the artists who's in the show. Her name's Abuki, and she is a Buto dancer and painter originally from Japan. And she's she's going to do a 10 minute performance in it, and then we'll also show the other artist's work as well. Wow. Wow. That's great. And, and if people want to get on your mailing list, we'll have a link down below for that. If people want to just be notified of the shows. You guys have to, uh, and I'll include some links. You got to see her spaces. They're, they're beautiful. Um, thanks so much for being here and really appreciate uh, you, you taking the time today. Thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate it as well. All right. Okay. Bye. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.